All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to think about how changes in wages affect our optimal choices of leisure and consumption. And we're going to do so using our concepts of income and substitution effects. Now, in some ways, what we're about to do is very, very similar, really the same as what we've done with other consumer decisions. But in another important way, it acts very differently. And you'll see this in a minute. So let's imagine, let's start out with the same budget constraint we looked at in the last video. So let's say C plus 10L less than or equal to 240, right? Which is just a version of C plus WL equals W times T. If we graph this thing, right? Let's say we could afford up to 240 units of consumption um, or 24 hours of leisure or anything in between. Cool. So far, so good. Now let's imagine that I get a raise. So instead of earning $10 an hour, now I'm going to earn $20 an hour. What's my budget constraint going to be? Well, my budget constraint right, is going to be the amount of consumption I can afford. So it'll be um, 20, right, times 24 minus L plus 0. I can rewrite this as C plus 20L less than or equal to 480. So an important thing to note here, right, which I'm going to actually keep as 20L less than or equal to 20 times 24, so an important thing to note here, right, is that when my wage goes up, not only does the price of leisure go up, but my income also goes up, right, so my, my new budget constraint has higher levels of income and a higher price of leisure. If we think about what this looks like graphically, What's the maximum amount of leisure that I can afford? It's still going to be 24 hours, right? I haven't gained any more hours in the day. On the other hand, the maximum amount of consumption I've afford, I can afford has now increased, right, to $480 worth of consumption. So I'm going to have a new budget constraint that looks like this, right? Now, what's important to note here Right, is that at the same time that leisure got more expensive, I also got richer. Whereas in a normal consumer theory problem, right, we generally expect that when one good gets more expensive, I get poorer. So I shifted from a price ratio, W equals 10, to a price ratio of W equals 20. Right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let's think for a minute about how we expect our choices to change as a result of this increase in wage. And we'll think about it in terms of income effects and substitution effects. So first of all, let's think about the substitution effect. Draw an indifference curve, like that, my original point. So did leisure get more expensive or did it get cheaper as a result of my wage increase? Leisure got relatively more expensive, right? An hour of my time now cost me $20. Expensive. Right, so the substitution effect should lead us to less leisure. How about the income effect? Well, if I do the decomposition, right, I take my new budget constraint and I shift it down until it just touches my old indifference curve, right, call that point S and I look at whether I got richer or poorer as the result of the increase in wage, I got richer, right? So if leisure is a normal good, right, the income effect should lead me to consume more leisure.
So I could very well, right, if I think about the total effect, I've got a substitution effect pushing me towards less leisure, right, from O to S. But then I have an income effect pushing me towards more leisure. And I could very reasonably end up with a final point like this, where I actually work less after the wage increase than I did before. Now, an important thing to point out here, right, is that in this case, right, so in this case, the overall effect, in general, the overall effect is ambiguous. Right, I could go either way. But in the case where I have an increase in leisure as a result of an increase in wage, a really important thing to point out here is that there's nothing really crazy going on, right? So we saw with given goods, sometimes you can have a consumer good um, where when the price goes up, you actually buy more of the good. Price goes down, you buy less of the good, right? In this case, what we're saying is when the wage goes up, right, we're going to buy more leisure. The price of leisure goes up, we're going to buy more leisure, not because it's an intensely inferior good, but because it's a normal good because we have preferences behaving the way we expect most preferences to behave. Right, so when leisure is a normal good, right, we have these two countervailing forces. We have when our wages go up, right, a substitution effect that says now that leisure is more expensive, let's substitute away from leisure and towards consumption, right, let's hire a cleaning service instead of cleaning our own apartment, let's get takeout instead of cooking, right, let's um, drive instead of taking the bus or instead of walking. On the other hand, right, we have an income effect, we get richer, which makes us say, now that I can make all this money, right, now that I'm on a better indifference curve than I was before, right, I have better options, why do I need to spend all my time working, right? Why don't I enjoy life a little bit more? So the question then is, under what circumstances do we expect one effect to predominate, and under what circumstances do we expect the, expect the other effect to predominate? And the way I want to think about this is, first of all, by asking the question, do we always expect leisure to be a normal good? Now, in some ways, the obvious answer here, right, is that of course leisure is a normal good, right? Why would leisure ever not be a normal good? But let's think for a minute about what it means for a good to be inferior, right? What the circumstances are that lead us to believe that a good can be inferior. So in general, inferior goods, right, are goods that are in some sense a uh, um, lower quality alternative to some substitute, right? So we say we need enough calories to survive, but we want our food to taste good. Beefaroni doesn't taste as good as, you know, craft made, um, you know, organic, um, organic macaroni, right? But it's cheap, so we'll buy beefaroni, right? Inferior good. So if we think about all of the various circumstances under which a person could be using leisure instead of consumption, there are some that meet that criteria. Right? If you're very, very low income, you might spend a lot of your leisure time, you know, not going skydiving or anything fun, right? But um, cooking meals, doing chores, right? Um, doing a lot of difficult tasks that you could accomplish easily with a little bit of money, right? Mending your own clothes. If we imagine that you're a really, really bad cook, you hate the taste of your own cooking, but you don't have very much money, we can easily believe. Right, the time that you spend cooking, right, pr producing cooked food but via leisure, is inferior to getting takeout. Right, you actually prefer a takeout meal, but you're stuck cooking for yourself because you can't afford it. In that case, we would expect leisure to be an inferior good. Right, so when, you're, when your wages are really, really, really low, right, when the price of leisure is really, really, really low, there could be lots of things where accomplishing a task via time is a cheaper but lower cost alternative to accomplishing the same task via money. On the other hand, right, when your wages are really, really, really high, we expect that all of your use of leisure is gonna be on things that you can't possibly buy, right, where money can't possibly replace your leisure time. So then it doesn't make any sense at all that leisure would be inferior. And in fact, we'd expect leisure and, and consumption to be fairly complementary, right? If you're spending your leisure time sleeping and playing with your children, um, right, not even like changing their diapers or something, just, just experiencing the joys of parenthood, right, then we don't expect you to have a large substitution effect between leisure and consumption. Cool. So based on that logic, right, we might expect that at very, very low wages, right, if we imagine that your wage goes from zero to some very, very small amount, right, 50 cents an hour, 
you might go, you might have a pretty big substitution effect and a pretty small income effect maybe even an income effect in the same direction as your substitution effect as a result of your change in wage, right? So you might go from obviously not spending any time at work if you're earning nothing to spending more time at work, right? Increasing wage earnings. So you increase your wages a little more, right? We might still expect that at low wages, right? The substitution effect is going to predominate over the income effect because of the fact that as you're getting richer, Right, you're replacing unpleasant tasks that you're spending time doing with um, you know, buying it off with money. Right? You're, you're, um, you're taking the bus, you're driving, right? you're getting takeout. Um, you're not having to give up sleep or give up things that you really enjoy doing. So let's say this is wage equals one, right? wage equals five, and 15, right? just putting numbers here. On the other hand, right, as your income gets higher and higher and higher, as your wages get higher and higher and higher, additional increases in wage are going to have larger and larger positive income effects, right, as the remaining leisure becomes more and more strongly a normal good. And the substitution effects are likely to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right, because of the fact that you're not doing things anymore with your leisure time that you can easily spend money on. So, you know, let's say your wage goes up to 20 or 30, right? $50 an hour, right? $500 an hour, right? As your income, as your wage gets higher and higher and higher, we might expect the amount of time that you spend in leisure to actually start increasing again. Right? Because as you get richer and richer and richer, you're starting to say to yourself, there's not really good, good uses of my additional money. Right? There's not um, a lot of stuff that I'd like to buy that I can't afford. But on the other time, hand, there's more and more fun ways for me to spend my time now that I can pair it with all of this money. Right? I'm feeling wealthier and wealthier and wealthier as my income goes up. And as I get wealthier, I want to increase my leisure time. So we're going to call this a backward bending labor supply curve. Because of the fact that whereas at low, at low wages, right, increased wages lead us to increase the amount of time we spend working, at higher wages, increased wages might actually decrease the amount of time we spend working. And we can see that right, by taking the results of each of these optimization problems. Because right? remember, each of these points here that I'm drawing these lines through is my optimal choice for the same preferences. right? where my indifference curves are tangent to my budget constraint. Right, all these are my optimal choices. I can take each of these choices and I can make a new graph where I have leisure and wage Right, which I can think of as something like my demand for leisure. Right? So in this case, at a wage of zero, my demand for leisure is 24. Right? As my wage increases, let's go up to 50 or so, right? I get more leisure, I get less and less leisure, and then I get more and more leisure. Right? So based on this graph. The turning point is about at a wage of 20. And let's say at a wage of 20, I take something like 14 hours of leisure, right? Just make it numbers. Right? So this is the same thing we do to get any kind of demand curve. The unusual thing here, right, is that the price of leisure um, is negatively related with leisure for some ranges, but then is positively related with leisure in other ranges. And the reason is that our price of leisure, as our price of leisure goes up, so does our purchasing power. Cool. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to take this logic and we're going to talk about how to use this to find labor demand curves. Right, so to shift away from thinking about our choice of leisure and consumption and think about what this means for labor supply.